First Thessalonians chapter five. I'm almost, I'm almost done. That's all right. First Thessalonians. You can go as long as you want. <laughs> Chapter 5. Yeah, yeah. yeah I need to have my Bible hard to find stuff. Well, you know what? Um, if, you, if you were a soldier in the battlefield, you know, um, and my dad can tell you or could have told you previously about his experience being in the army, and one of the things they got you to do is that you would be standing at attention during inspection by the commanding officer. And as he, you would be standing there holding your rifle up like this. And yeah. If he reached for it, you had to release it to him. But if he at the last minute didn't, you had to be able to get a hold of that rifle. And if that rifle hit the ground, you had to fall on it and kiss it. Oh, wow! Be because it was the most important thing for you. you what good is a soldier with a weapon? They had to nail too. Right? You needed to learn how to disassemble your weapon. Clean it and put it back together again, and then you, by the time you went through basic training, you had to be able to do that in the dark. You understand what I'm saying? To you? Yeah. you needed to be able to disassemble your weapon, clean it, and put it back together again in the dark. Because, as you know, when you're on the battlefield, it's not like you're sitting there with floodlights on your weapons while you're taking your partner, and everything. You're in the battle. The reason we need to study is because it's not today that you need what we're studying, it's when you're in the battle you need to know what we're studying. Yeah. Right? right? So we need to, you know, when I was a kid, I went to Sunday school and we had what's called Bible drills. And everybody brought their Bible and they would say, you would have your Bible and they would say, draw a source, and out would come the Bible. And remember, you had to hold it by the spine, right? Draw a source, repeat after me. And they would tell you the verse, and everybody had to say the verse. And then they would go, charge. And then you had the purpose to find it, had to get up and read it. Right? And that was what we did in Sunday school. It was preparation for, and there would be then, the books of the Bible. They would say, okay, who can recite for me the books of the Bible in order? And you had to be able to recite the verses of the books of the Bible in order as you went through. Okay? So you had to be able to do that. Old Testament, New Testament. Okay? How many verse, how many books in the Old Testament? How many books in the New Testament? 27 in the New. 66 in total. Yes, there you go. Very good. Anyway, something for, you to think, <laughs> something for you to think about when your daily Bible reading seems to you to be mundane and pointless is to understand that it's what's in you that God is going to use. Okay? It has to get in you somehow, and it gets in you by you reading it, by you meditating. Yeah. Like, I, like I know what you mean, because I was in the book of Philippians for 40 years, and I said, why am I in this? But now I know, because God uses those verses to bring the attention to things I need to do. Right. Like uh, preferring others before myself. Mm -hmm. Right. I, God uses the word. That's right. Right. That's, all. That's, the, that's the essence of what we're talking about. Right. First Thessalonians 5, verse 1. But of the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. How many of you are concerned, consumed, worried about the times and seasons? How often do I hear you going, oh, I think we're living in the last days. Okay, well you know what, if you do what God's calling you to, you don't have to worry about it. Okay, right. it doesn't matter. Not that you shouldn't be aware, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night, for when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that the day should overtake you as a thief. But you are the children of light, and the children of the day, and we are not of the night, nor of the darkness. Okay? Last verse we're going to go to. The last passage. Second Peter chapter 1. When we're thinking about our doctrine, there are lots of books out there. There are lots of people out there. There's lots of media out there. We're mixing all kinds of theology together today. We're dragging in Buddhist concepts and saying, oh yeah, that's what Jesus meant by when he said this. And we're bringing in um, you know, Baha'i teaching and we're bringing everything. We need to get back to taking God at his word. You know, the reason God gave us a Bible was that you could try the spirits to know whether they were of God or not. 
Okay? God gave us a Bible so that we could try the spirits, so that we could try the theologies to know what is really of God. Okay? 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19. We, we have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto you do well that you take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arises in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation, For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. We need to be careful as we study the scripture that we don't try to put our modern day spin on things. We need to be careful as we read through the Bible that we don't try to use modern day psychology to explain certain things or to interpret certain things. Mm -hmm. We need to believe what God says the way God said it. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's easy to take a prophecy out of context and try to apply to our situation. We need to understand that um, these things are put together in a book for us to see and it is explained by itself. Do you understand what I mean? When you want to interpret the Bible, you use the Bible to interpret the Bible. Okay? What the followers of God believed it meant at the time is what it meant. <coughs> Not what, looking back, we want to ascribe to it to me. Okay? What the authors of the New Testament meant when they wrote the New Testament as they were inspired by God to write it, is what it meant. It doesn't mean something that some person today wants to superimpose upon it. Okay? Most of us, or many of the things that we believe as Christians today are not theological, doctrinal things at all, but our cultural experiences that we have that are part of our church culture. Okay? The revelation that God gave is not because it was a patriarchal society, was not because they were primitive people, was not because they were Middle Eastern, it was because they were moved by God to speak it and to say it and to write it. It's important that we understand that if Timothy is true, as Paul wrote to Timothy and said that all scripture is given by inspiration of God, do you not know that God knew we would be in this room at this moment today? Amen. So when he, when he had it be written, when he spoke it through individuals, then he knew that we would be reading it today. He was not unaware of the cultural upbringing we would have. We don't have to translate it into modern anything. We just have to read it. Okay? So often we want to make Scripture a difficult thing. And God knew that we, who we would be, that would be reading it. And so, by faith, we need to embrace the teachings and doctrines of the Bible. Having said that, I would encourage you to spend time understanding that as we are reading it, um, God speaks that to us. I don't know about you. My experience is that um, as I'm wandering about through my life, there are things that God will just plant into my being. And most of those things that He plants into my being are things that are a particular scripture verse, which is timely in the situation where I am. And so then I can go home and I can look up the verse and I can understand what it is God was trying to say to me about that situation or where God is leading me in that situation or what God is saying that I should speak about next Sunday, or that type of thing. It's implanted by God. It's not something that I, I don't 
go home and pick up books and say, oh, what would be a good concept for us to talk about this week? Or what would be, what would be timely? Or what would be seasonal? Or, or I wonder what people are worried about. I try to just let God be the one who inspires our direction. Do you understand that? And so I want us to understand that we are more than anybody up until this point living in the last days. Right? Because this is as far as history has gone. So nobody can be more or less than us except for the people tomorrow, right? <coughs> yeah. um, so, so knowing that, all of these things that God is speaking to us about the last times are things that we need to take heed of. Right? We need to take heed of the fact that there are seducing spirits. And remember, a seducing spirit, it's called a seducing spirit because it seduces us. Right? A seducing spirit is something that plays on what you want to be or to have rather than the truth. Eve was seduced by the serpent because the serpent told her things that it knew she wanted to hear even though in saying them to her he was taking her in a direction that was contrary to the will of God. Our enemy is not unwise. He doesn't come to us and speak to us about things we don't want to hear. But he uses the very things that are appealing to us in a way that seems to use scripture to take us in a direction that is contrary to the will of God. Do you understand that? Therefore, we need to stand firm in the things of God. And so as we look at where we are today in the world, scripture will be our guide. <coughs>